You're listening to Re Two. Local Spotlight Week on Fly FM. And here he is on our Friday <laughs> breakfast show. <laughs> Re Two. Good morning. How good are you morning, doing, guys? I'm fine, thank you. How about you? Uh, we're great. Um, very excited to have you here on the show. It's uh, we've just found it's like uh, found out it's your fifth time on Fly FM Something already. Like that, yeah, so you're like yeah. a regular <laughs> guest kind of. Um, and we are ve- uh, we are very excited because you brought a brand new song as well. Yeah, I love dogs. Yeah, it's the brand new single coming out next week Friday. And we have the first play. First play. Yeah, that's really cool. <laughs> um, can you tell us a bit about the song? Um, yeah, so I think it's like my most personal song in regarding like I. I don't know why I had this feeling, but I felt like I was running out of time to either make it in, well, quote quotation marks, make it in music or do something with music before something was too late. I don't know why. So I had that feeling and then that's what spurred on the song. So it's kind of like a message to myself, if that makes sense. That's cool. (laughs) I mean, before... So emotional, so deep. (laughs) um, Yeah, but I mean, most of your songs are quite emotional and deep. (laughs) Um, We will talk about all of that. uh, But first, we want to, of course, listen to it. This is Ritu and Isle of Dogs here on Fly FM. To Isle of Dogs here on Fly FM. First play. um, And we just spoke about it um it's actually from all the tracks i've heard um from you it, it's my favorite one it's um <laughs> you, probably um I'm, I'm probably not the only person who said that to you you yeah, said yeah. like there has been some really good feedback on that song yeah so show, showing it to people they say that oh, it's just a different feeling like it's still the same ambient moody kind of stuff but it's a bit more mel- melodic i don't know a bit more energetic you can feel it so, yeah, yeah, a lot of people enjoy that one. It has a really, really cool vibe. But <laughs> speaking of your songwriting, how how does it work for you? How do, when do you come up with ideas? How do you come up? Is it first like the melody and then the lyrics? Um, probably the lyrics first because I'll I'll think of a few lyrics whilst all the songs happen whilst I'm like either camping or surfing or just on a trip away, and then, um, that's where all the the ideas would come from. So I Love Dogs was when I went to Folkestone down in Kent. And it was just by the sea and it was like loads of jagged rocks and cliff sides. So I was like, okay, this is cool. And then I had that vision. And then I'll just go in my room, do all the instruments, send it over to my producer, Sam Wayne. And then he's also our drummer. And then he mixes it and makes it all magic. And yeah. <laughs> Nice. But so you like, you, you are really beautiful spots um, <laughs> to come up with your music, but still it's very, I wouldn't say dark, but it's like not like happy feel music. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Do you have any idea why is that? I have no case? idea. <laughs> I have no because like I don't know. My music taste is it varies. Like if I was putting on if I my phone was plugged in at a party, it could go from like heavy metal to like serious pop to like you know it can vary. So I don't know where it is, but I think my thing was I like to make people move at a show. So for a while I was like, ah, oh, my music's not really doing that until I played that. Lendor last year and then I saw a few people move into it and I was like oh actually some people do move to it it's just got a it's a slow burner I think yeah oh, kind of what what are the goals you have well, like, what should a good song from you or by you um, make with the people what what is for the, me yeah uh, like a hair raising experience like if you're listening to it you could either listen to it like on top of a mountain or you can listen to it camping. Like if you can listen to it in your super intense moment and a super chill moment. If I can hit both of those, then I feel like that's what re two is. That's <laughs> really cool. I like that. <laughs> you, 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 it seems like you think a lot, a lot about like the moments when your music is listened to, yeah, where your music, yeah. not not in the in- Instagram way. So like, I want to have the most beautiful Insta spot. But it's like you, you, it's not just writing a song and getting it out. No, no. I always every single song from the first song I ever made is always thought about live because I love playing live that's like the main thing so I, when I was writing out of vlogs I was be, I was thinking about oh what would the music be like oh what would the lights look like what would the thing and then I'd be like oh actually I need to finish the song first before I <laughs> do those things but I always think of the live experience and how people will react to it and then everything else would like fall into place fingers crossed hopefully <laughs> and where people can <laughs> see you live or watch you live uh, playing and um, we will talk about this after the next song um, and there are Quite a few events coming up, you yeah. told us. So there's a lot to talk about right after the Amazons and Mother here on Fly FM. I have no fear whatsoever of anybody or anything. That was a tough, tough cut. <laughs> uh, 30 place and time, Ritu. Um, 
And what I heard, like in both of the songs, are like voice bits. So you kind of like to yeah. include voice bits. Yeah, I love I love including the little interlude. Yeah. <laughs> how how do you cho choose them? How do you think of them? Because not that many artists actually do that. It's I got a bit of inspiration from like Bon Iver. He would take like some small audio snippet. Even Kanye West did like a lot of um, samples. But I try and um, I try and link it to the feeling of the song. So for example, with um, third to place and time I, I chose um, it was a poem do not go gentle into a good light and I heard that when I watched the film Interstellar and it's about again finding your way um, don't be in, not getting lost and trying and going full steam ahead with something and that's what that song's about and then did the poem is about that as well so I try and think link it in and with Isle of Dogs as well about being lost and um, feeling that you're running out of time And then the audio bit in there is from the film Interstellar when um, the communication is cut, times run out, they don't, they can't speak anymore. So I try and link it to, try and I try and link it to. That's cool. <laughs> I mean, I, I really like it because it's something that if you listen to a song and maybe at some point you start like, especially with your music, it, it, for me it creates like a, a process that I start thinking about stuff. Mm. Like it, it inspires me to, st uh, to think about stuff. And then if you have a different sound element, it brings you back to the song kind yeah, of. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's really, really cool. <laughs> All of your songs are very personal. Yeah. Do you sometimes have the feeling it's too personal? Like if you have like, how is it if you share it with people who actually find out something about you they didn't yeah. know before or who know what you're singing about? It's, I don't know really, it's like, I I wouldn't notice they're personal because there's nothing really 100% direct, there's no lyric that says, you've broken my heart, but I, so I, I guess you can read between the lines and like kind of guess mm. where I'm coming from, I don't know, I don't know if it's... Did you ever have the feeling that, that there was hard for you to show a song to a person because it was quite personal? I love dogs, I'm really scared about sharing, that, 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 that one I'm really scared about sharing yeah especially to the people that are really close to me because they'll be like why does he feel like the time's running out like what what's <laughs> and what does he want to show us like what what's what is the message there so that one and in turn i think that like i'm more scared with the singing because with the old ep it's um quite I've tried, i kind of kept it back a bit with this one i'm trying to go higher and kind of shout a bit so yeah Do you have the feeling, uh, because you said like uh, um, running out of time is kind of the, the theme of uh, Isle of Dog, yeah. um, and you said it, it's kind of based on your sports past? like Yeah, yeah, so it's about, yeah, so when I was younger and doing so a lot of skateboarding or football, uh, football um, you have that feeling where pe when you're younger, people are more interested in you because it's like, oh, a young talent and all of that. So I, for some reason, kept that mentality going into music. And I'm 23 at the moment, so I felt like, oh, damn, I'm running out of time. Whereas when I thought about it the other day, I was like, when you look at people like Ed Sheeran, Hosier, um, Sam Smith, they all had their really big prime when they're like 26. And they're at, they're at the stage I'm at, at their age. So it's like, oh, I'm actually all right. But I don't know, I have that mentality of like, oh, I need to go quickly, I need to go quickly. Definitely. <laughs> it's interesting because um, you, you mentioned these artists and, and it's completely true. So no one's going to have uh, know uh, what's going to happen in no the next know, three, yeah. three years. Let's play one of them. Uh, this is Sam Smith and Nomani dancing with a stranger here on Fly FM. Three, two on Fly FM. And he's still with us on this Friday morning with Izzy and Max. Um, and uh, we just heard one of uh, one of your songs for King and His Glory. Yeah. Uh, also a great one. And if uh, people want to see that or any of your songs where are you going to perform next <laughs> where can people see you watch your life so the next show is um at the Nottingham Trent SU mm -hmm. and that's Battle of the Bands and that's next Tuesday so that's on the 19th and that's free entry for that one and I've been there last year and it's actually a really cool event yeah. um, you said this year it's like eight bands something? yeah so it's four four Trent bands and four confetti bands and we're going to battle it out for victory so I'll, try, <laughs> I'll try and win for Trent <laughs> have you planned anything special for this because it's like a battle of the bands um, what can people expect they can expect this live um Isle of dogs live oh so even like even yeah, before yeah, you yeah. actually even release the single release, they yeah. can Ooh. they can hear that exclusive live. and then uh i don't know just come along and then you can see the rest and then we've got um on that saturday we've got rough trade supporting my friend george gretton um and then on the 29th we've playing at rock city uh, supporting adam french so we're quite busy 
when you when you're supporting is that actually quite comfortable for you because it's not your own show or do you d um. does it feel a bit weird because you actually want to play the main show so want p have people to come to see you in no i'm, I'm very happy supporting them because i i both of these guys are my friends first so i'm happy to help help them out and if any if i can bring five people and that's five more people for them then i'm happy to do that it's um yeah as like and our music our music uh our music is similar so it's not like it's you're gonna have some moody moody routine music and it's just gonna swap to like something like ariana grande like completely opposite so i'm more than happy to to help out and support but I, I, i'm glad that we're friends first because it just makes it more organic and natural and nice are there any artists speaking of ariana or something where you would say okay i'm not gonna support for them because oh, <laughs> um, i don't know actually that's a really good question what would be the reasons why i don't support them like what just because of my sounds different or uh or you don't like their sound or like you don't you can't identify with their music with their like personality there are a lot of reasons to say okay i don't yeah. like that musician so i don't want to support him as an act because you wouldn't want to pass up on an opportunity an opportunity mm. is still an opportunity so i don't know i think if the genre i would only say no if it would be a disservice to them for example all of their fans are going to go to see them and if i'm just a completely different genre i wouldn't be like no i'm not doing that in a, like a diva way i'll just be like it your doesn't make sense yeah you'd be better off getting x y and z and i'd offer x y and z yeah. instead of myself just because to make their show better yeah to, to get a more positive look at this or view on this <laughs> um are there any artists you would like there would be a dream to support them oh hosier mm -hmm. ben, ben boniver uh ben howard uh adam french was actually one of them because i've been listening to him for years and so that's quite like a dream come true that's pretty awesome um i think hosier at the moment is absolutely fantastic isn't he dermot kennedy all of them are just fantastic artists so yeah, you've got quite a few, <laughs> yeah. That would be like my ultimate lineup. <laughs> yeah, you got to dream big. Yeah, got to dream big. <laughs> then um, let's try to get Hosier on uh, next, just to, to have a bit of uh, Hosier. <laughs> um, one of the new songs, uh, this is Movement here on Fly FM. Oh, yeah. And Hosier is just like, it probably needs a little bit more time until uh, they realize or he realizes that um, they should get you as a support actor. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. This is Movement, Hosier. Yeah. here first. <laughs> Re2 on Fly FM. And it's so cool to have a professional musician, like a proper <laughs> musician in the studio, because you, you you get like to listen to songs completely different. You said something about the Hosier songs uh, movement, or the, the Hosier song, or like all of his songs, basically. Yeah. I said that yeah, they he's really good at titling his songs. So it, if I didn't know what if, if I didn't know what movement was, and I was describing movement to like an alien species, I'd play that and it sounded like movement. Or take me to church sounds like you're taking some. I don't know. Yeah. He's like he's really good yeah, at the title I, yeah, of his I get songs. It. I, think, yeah. I think the best example is Arsonist Lullaby. It sounds like people setting things on fire. It's, it's really <laughs> good. Like, yeah, it's crazy because like we both, Izzy and we were sitting here we're like, yeah, it's actually true. <laughs> We've never thought about it that way. Yeah. But, um, you say you have a quite broad music taste, oh, yeah, but especially like as a musician, how do you listen to to different music? Do you see like because we just listen to a song and say yeah we like yeah. it? Maybe we even can express why we like it or don't like it. How is it for you, especially with chart music or yeah. like different genres? It's it's very mo if if I'm in a mood for it. For example, if I'm skating or doing something like that, I'm listening to like Bring Me the Horizon or something really energetic, really get me in a mood. Or if I'm relaxing i'm listening to nova and more or boniva or so I, I, the first it depends if i'm sitting down or if i'm traveling i'll listen to more of the instruments and like i can appreciate more of like how they do it more but if i'm doing an activity then i have certain genres for certain activities just to get me more uh. in the mood that's actually That's interesting. Clever, yeah. yeah. Um, how is it like if you have, if you are like in a car and someone is having the radio on, you have literally like top forty music. Mm. Um, is that something you can listen to? Is that like from? A, do you see the professional at least, or like do you see that okay they made it well? It's not my music, but they produced 100%. it well. I don't know what it is. When I'm in a car and we're driving, I love radio music and just chart popping. <laughs> I love it. I just like yeah, just let me just enjoy some charty 
but the thing is, I think pop has a bad connotation to it because pop, yeah. pop just means popular. I, and I think people think like it's, for example, Ed Sheeran is pop, but he's a fantastic singer songwriter. Yeah. Or Hozier, technically, nowadays he's pop, but he's not a pop. Yeah, I don't know. It, it just has a bad connotation to it, but all it means is popular. Yeah. So, I, 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 but if we're talking about general chant music, I love it when I'm in the car and just like, sometimes you just want to just listen to music and forget about it and just have a good time and just relax. Mm. So doesn't always have to be moody <laughs> and we will talk about about like the inspiration you get maybe from different music um and maybe also like different styles you have first we have some top 40 music this is ariana grande and uh, seven rings here on fly fm on fly fm it's local spotlight week, so we have uh, Ritu here in the studio with us. Uh, what's your opinion on Ariana Grande? She's amazing. She's really good. I Be feel like she's really chill. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, she has been through a lot of stuff. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, it's it's crazy how big she has become in the last yeah, two or three crazy. years. Mm. Um, are there actually other artists that inspire you? That do you listen to music and think, oh, that helps me to come up with an idea? Or is it literally what you said earlier that you are on a cool place and you come up with an um, idea? No, there's definitely like, I feel like it's more of a I need to step up my game feeling. So if, if I listen to Bonnie Ver Holocene and be like, I can never write a song like that, but I'll try and I'll get I'll try, yeah. and it just makes me want to go up a level level. But um. If there's just pure artists that inspire me, or well, as of recent, Amber Run, I've recently been inspired. Sam Fender, he's recently inspired me to like be a proper music. When I watch him, it's like he's a real musician. Like he's a mm. proper musician. Um, I can't remember. I can't think of any. Who else? There's those two really right now are really inspiring me. But if you say like um, you want to step up your game or something, are there things you say you want to improve in your music? Is there something you're working on, like with yeah. your voice or with instruments or? Yeah, like my voice, I want to try and sing at a higher range. Mm -hmm. But um, in instrument wise, I want to learn to play guitar better because I'm a drummer. Like that's what I I am. So I'm a drummer. I want to learn to play piano as well. And I feel like if I can learn to properly sing, <laughs> like play guitar and piano, then I can take my songs into a different and get really crazy with chords and like weird mm. shapes and but that will just come with time I guess got practice <laughs> I mean the one one question is like literally a job interview question all the time it's like well, where do you see yourself in five years or this mm. kind of stuff but do you have kind of a vision what do you want your next years to be like you said there's maybe something coming October-ish in yeah so this uh, around October this year I want to try and release my second EP but in terms of five years from now I don't know but I do have I've had this recurring dream probably for like the past six six years seven years mm -hmm. whereas um, I go out on stage and I don't know what festival it is but there's a, a crowd a huge crowd and um, I have drums next to me um, and like the count clicks in one two three four I go to smack the drums and it just cuts out and I don't know what I don't know what song it is. I don't know what festival it is. There's just loads of people, but I've had this dream for a while, like years. So hopefully, so, oh, that would be cool. <laughs> I feel like when 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 I when I walk out onto a stage and see it, I'll be like, oh, this is it. This yeah. is actually <laughs> this is the moment. And then, so you have this big cliffhanger still, yeah. <laughs> and you don't know what's coming out of this. Don't know idea. what it is. Um, are there big festivals where you're like, okay, there will be a dream to play there? Um, yeah, of course, that's gonna be, there's always the big ones, but I feel like one, I'd love to do Wilderness Festival, that's a pretty relaxed one. Yeah. Redden and Leeds would be pretty, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty cool to play that. Um, uh, there's loads, uh, 2000 Trees, um, I think my number one would be probably Redden and Leeds, I don't know why, but I just... Like I feel like they're kind of like the first festival. Yeah. Like you, off, loads of people go after their GCSEs and yeah. stuff. Like it's like you know they're like get, first kind of yeah. like oh it's really cool. So that would be, yeah. so be pretty awesome to play that. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here today. No it was it was really a pleasure. Um, and of course we have to finish off this show um, with your brand new song <laughs> because if we have the first play then we play it twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, and because I really really like the song. So uh, thank you so much for coming. Um, Thanks. We're gonna be back. In, oh, I'm going to be back in two weeks. But first of all, <laughs> we will have a really good weekend. We all Thanks a lot, uh, Izzy. And uh, enjoy your weekend. And this is Riri 2 and um, Isles of Dark.